all of us have a pain and a burden inside of us to see a change somewhere in the world, in our family, in our lives. There's a, there's, a, there's a pain inside us that we need to see a shift. And you know where that pain comes from? God puts the frustration and the pain and the grieving in us because he wants to birth a dream through us so that we can shift and change situations. It is possible because God has given us authority to see shifting and changing in our world, our, starting out with our own personal lives, relationships, families, jobs, and then moving out into the world around us. So I wanna talk about that. So first of all, what do you think the root of courage is? What do you think the very core of courage is? Like, where do we get it from? Of course we get courage from God, we know that. But sometimes we know so much stuff in our head and we don't know how to get it into our heart. So how do we get that into our heart? Okay, I'm just gonna give you one short phrase. When we know that God is for us, it gives us courage. See, a lot of times we have stuff inside of us and we know that it's good, we know that it's God, we know that someone else needs it, but we don't know how to step out in a dream because we, we sometimes think we're alone. We think, well, what if I step out? What if I do this? What if I say that? And what if I get rejected? What if people don't like what I'm saying? What if this doesn't work? What if my dream doesn't work? And it will shift our whole world when we understand, you know, we're not alone. God is for us. He's all around us. He's behind us, around us, in front of us. He's in us. And he is for us. And guys, sometimes we think we can't run with a dream because we feel like if we run with a dream, if we fall and we fail, we're going to be embarrassed. But you know, do you ever rebuke a child because they don't know how to walk straight away? You know, when our children have a dream to walk, they just got this thing inside of us. We want to walk. We don't know why, but we just want to walk. And they start to crawl and then they start to walk and they fall. We're there to catch them. We're so proud of them that they started to do something great. So guys, I want to encourage you, first of all, today, be encouraged because the thing that God has put inside of you is worth you taking a risk on. It's worth you taking a risk on even if you fail the first time because every time you take a step forward in the right direction, even if you fall flat on your face, you have grown and you've got further and you've developed a muscle in you that you never had before. So I encourage you to step out in courage. And so I'm like, I've got like one, two, three, four quick things to tell you on how to develop courage. So first of all, by the way, if you've just joined now, we're talking about courage. Grab a friend, let us know that you're here because we want to know, I'm Mandy Adendorf, I'm the director of the Firehouse School of Supernatural Ministry. We're actually about to start ministry school in two weeks time. We're working on some applications, last minute applications are coming in. If you guys or anyone you know is interested in learning about supernatural ministry, how to have greater courage, let them know about Firehouse School of Supernatural Ministry. We're actually in Plainville, Connecticut. We are one of the greatest secrets that is hidden in Connecticut. Um, we're in our eighth year and we have re already released students from our school over the eight years back into their places of employment, back into their ministries. We've just helped them to come a step further. So, okay, here we go. First of all, courage, intimacy. Okay, that's the first thing I want to talk about. See, to know that God is for us changes, it shifts our mind. We understand, wow, I can actually step forward in this. I have the courage to move forward, right? But it starts with intimacy. It starts with this really understanding God loves me. Now, if you're a Christian and you're listening to this, you know that God loves you in your head. And for many of us, in, in, in the heart too. But I want to tell you that in my many years of ministry, I have come across too many people who love God with all their hearts, but they've never fully experienced this real deep sense of, I am so loved by God. They, they haven't experienced the feeling of waking up in the morning thinking, wow, God loves me, even on a bad day. Not just a head knowledge, not just a faith knowledge, but a revelation in our hearts which changes us. Intimacy is so important because when we know with our knower and every part of us that God loves us, we can move forward into the season of courage. 
because just like a child who wants to do something scary, if they're standing on top of a diving board, if they know that daddy is right there and he's like, I'm right here in the pool, I'm gonna catch you, you can do this because I am behind you and I will not let you drown. That child will be able to jump off that diving board. But if the daddy's not there, the child's not sure if the daddy is there, or the, the child can't see the daddy, the daddy's like, I'm here, but you can't see me, it's harder to step out in courage. And that is why knowing that God loves us on the innermost part of us is so important. Guys, it is critical. It is the most critical part of our walk with God. And we do this in the Firehouse School of Supernatural Ministry. We actually focus on intimacy with God and teaching students how do I, how do I catch that in my heart, in my spirit. My mind knows it. How do I catch it? We go there. And uh, here's the next step. Not only intimacy, but hearing God like hearing God for ourselves, increasing our spiritual capacity to discern what God is saying. Because, you know, a lot of times we'll say, you know, if God wrote it down on the wall, if I knew for sure God wanted me to step out and do this thing or, you know, go into that relationship or whatever it is, if I knew for sure, I would do it, right? Don't we all think that? That is why we need to discern and learn how to tune our ears into heaven so that we can actually hear him when he speaks to us. Because if we can't hear clearly, we are going to struggle. And I want to tell you, none of us are deaf in the spirit. We can all hear God. And if there were any deaf children of God, God is a good father. He would lip sync, right? He would do something so that we could actually understand what he's saying. A lot of times we just haven't tuned our hearing in and you know we have many spiritual senses we can when I say hearing I'm not saying we hear the audible voice of God sometimes that does happen but most of the times there's an inner discernment and that's sometimes where we struggle with our inner discernment but there are actually multiple spiritual senses that we all have supernatural senses that God has given his church and his children and a lot of times just for lack of knowledge we don't know that. We don't know how to tune in our ears like Elijah, Elisha, the, new, the, the, the uh, apostles in Acts. We don't know how to live that life because nobody's taught us. And that is why we go back to being students and we learn all over again. And that's something that we focus on in Firehouse School of Supernatural Ministry. But if you can't make it this year, I just want to encourage you that you can hear God and you can press into that. And uh, I, you know, we don't have time now, but I will tell you that you can hear God and maybe just start off by saying, Lord, thank you that you have given me spiritual ears, that you have given me a heart that hears me, hears you. Start helping me to unlock that in my life. So we, we need to have intimacy with God. We need to hear God. That all increases our courage. And then the next thing is spiritual warfare. We will hear so much about spiritual warfare, but I will tell you that we don't just fight spiritual warfare by rebuking demons. And yes, the demons are real. The, yeah, there is a dark side. Of course, we know that. And deliverance is a thing and an important thing. But I will tell you that a lot of the spiritual warfare we go through are demonic lies that we actually become a host for in our minds because we don't know it's demonic. Because a lot of the times the enemy will come disguised as our own thoughts and so we need to discern the difference between my thoughts and satanic thoughts because when we know it's from the enemy we can shut those thoughts down we can do that the problem is we waver between the two and we receive those thoughts from the enemy as just our thoughts and we think it's us we, you know i'm having a bad day or yeah yeah i'm no good I can't, this is wrong or i can't do this because of that and we're actually not understanding spiritual warfare the enemy is not stupid he doesn't just come as a big, you know, red guy with flames and, uh, you know, blood dripping from his teeth. No, he comes as our own innocent thoughts. Many times the enemy will come as religious thoughts. He did it to Jesus. He actually spoke the word of God to Jesus and Jesus had to fight in the spirit to discern, is this God? Is this my thoughts? Is this Satan? And so a spiritual warfare is very important. We go there in firehouse. We go to some of the hardest places. We have to because we're fighting a spiritual war. The next thing is supernatural power. Guys, the supernatural power of God, being able to see the sick healed, being able to see deaf people speak, being able to see blind people see, seeing our own physical 
ailments be, get healed. That is a thing, and it is not a thing for special people. That is a thing for any born-again believer. It's what Jesus shed his blood for. And for us to live our entire lives and think somebody else is going to see that but not us, we are literally taking the portion that God has given to us and just pushing it aside and saying, well, obviously that's not for me because I've never experienced that. Well, the reality is it is for us. And it's time that we start receiving that and learning about it and figuring out how do I step into the thing that God has given to me because I am going to give account for this. And not only that, I can change my world. I can help people. You know, I'll tell you, I had an experience a year ago. A dear friend of mine was terribly sick. It bothered me night and day. It was stuck inside my spirit. I, I knew it was an injustice that she was so sick. It was not right. It was, it was not right. God does not want people to be sick like that. And, you know, I pressed in along with other people. We prayed. We saw a miracle. Not a scientific miracle, a supernatural miracle. Not a medical miracle by doctors, but a supernatural miracle. And God wants to heal our friends, our cities, our nations, and he wants us to be part of that. So supernatural power is so important. So guys, I'm going to go over that again, and then I'm going to give you the last point. Intimacy. Hearing from God, spiritual warfare, and supernatural power. We need all of that. We need to understand that. It is the building blocks for our faith. And the very last thing that we do at Supernatural School of Ministry, which I wanted, I left for the end because it's one of the most important things. Many times as believers, we think all of our problems are from outside. They're all from the devil and from life. We don't understand that many of the problems come because we have soul wounds. We have wounds on the inside of us. We have a brokenness from different trauma situations, things that might have happened to us when we were kids, things that we had no control of. And those things have caused things inside of us to become wounds. And the problem with wounds are we can stuff them, we can try and help them, but only God can heal inner wounds. And there are ways that God uses to heal the inner wounds of our soul. Because when we don't get healed on the inside, we can have the greatest miracles. We can actually see the sick healed. We can actually see crazy miracles. We can see all the things I've just talked about. But when we don't have our own wounds healed, we personally have blocks in our lives, like blocks, things that are pushing us down, things that push down our joy, things that are pushed down our emotional health, Things that just make us depressed and anxious. Guys, we're not born for that. No, Jesus, we've been reborn. We've been born again so that we can be free of that. But there are ways to be free. And those ways uh, we teach. And, and we teach you how to do the inner war. And how to walk through things that are hard. How to receive healing. How to receive our joy back. How to come out of brokenness. For many of us, we go through brokenness in our lives. And we think, well, that... That's broke me. Like I'll never, I'll never be healed. I'll never really be restored. No, God is the healer. And so, guys, I just challenge you. You need the fullness of God. And if you can't come to the school, you may be from another state. You may not, you know, you may not be able to come on Monday and Wednesday nights to Plainville, Connecticut. You may be somewhere else. But if you can come on those two nights for eight months. And come alongside with like-minded believers that are running off to Jesus and the fullness of what he bought for us. I'm going to encourage you. We are taking in a few more people. We are literally last minute. We stop. We actually, it's not we don't stop. We start on September 11th, but this is in two Monday nights time. And I'm just giving out a last call. And I'm going to encourage you, if you think that there's someone that you know that needs this, please send this video to them. Because we believe that God is sending out his angels to connect the right people who need the school for the next eight months. And that he's going to just bring those ones. Because we don't know who's ready for this. We don't know those things. And we don't do tons of advertising. We rely solely Mostly, we do a bit of Instagram and Facebook, but mostly we, we rely on our students that have gone through this experience and they tell their friends and videos like this because, guys, you need everything that God has for you. And so 
you can see the link if you want to sign up it's on our um, bio our website is ourfirehouse.com and if you go there you file an application uh, we are about to start an incredible eight month journey for the eighth time it is so exciting guys so if you want to be with us please sign out send this please just click the little send button to send this on your stories or on to your little you know the whatever you call those things you know our friends that we send things to send it to them um if you can't come you know the lord will use you he'll show you who needs this in their lives and you guys have an amazing day last thing i am going to say this is for everyone we've had pastors do this course we've had leaders of ministries we've had folks who have just brand new believers do our course and it has just been so powerful for everyone to walk together because we're one body and uh, men women you have to be 18 or older to be part of the school but god bless you have an amazing day thank you for listening